Uh, as you can see here, we've taken certain information from the case, uh, the number of target companies, the current cost of the problem, the price of the proposed service, um, and uh, put in some assumptions here for the first two years of the income statements, um, which, uh, sorry, the, these, these are assumptions for the third through fifth year, and the first two years are coming from the income statement that, and the balance uh, the income statement that we've already created. We did not create a balance sheet uh, for the prior period, although we could have done that. And um, ditto for uh, the same is true of the cash flow statement. We're going to create all those things on an annual basis to save ourselves some time and not go through it on a monthly basis, although if you wanted to understand what cash flow was going to be month to month in the first year, you would create all the things that we're doing here on an annual basis uh, on a monthly basis on the prior tab. Um, I will leave it as an exercise for you to go through and see where all these assumptions came from uh, in the model. In some cases I've created a new one like for instance an arcane assumption about how much balance how much cash needs to be on the balance sheet when you sell the company. Um, that is not critical for this exercise but I thought I'd put it in because you might en uh, enjoy understanding that. Um, so just like we were on the second year uh, monthly budget, or with the second year monthly budget, we're going to cop uh, simply copy numbers from the assumptions into this part. And the number of target companies is 1,500. The current cost of the problem, again, is 2 bucks. The market need indicator uh, is equal to uh, the multiplier of these two line, so it's about a three billion dollar problem per year. Uh, the price of the proposed service again is given both on the monthly model and above, so I'm going to copy it up here. The multiple of the proposed solution versus the existing solution, uh, that would be the um, current cost of the problem divided by what our solution costs. 13.3 times. And the number of 30-day months that that is, I will leave that as an exercise for you uh, to figure out. Uh, the maximum dress market here is then um, uh, the number of target companies, and this is again discussed in the case, the number of, of target companies that are out there times the price of the proposed service. So if the company has a 100% market share in the first year, um, then uh, the maximum number, uh, the maximum address market is $225 million, which is in early stage investing terms actually quite small. Most early stage investors want to look at a billion dollar market or more if they can. The maximum address market in units then would simply be the number of target companies. Oops, excuse me. Uh, the unit sales forecast, uh, we actually have already calculated for the first year, and that would be back on the monthly budget tab, 43 for the first year. For the second year, we have a similar calculation. I'm going to go back to the second year, uh, to the two year budget, and capture that number. Uh, the market share implied in units uh, is simply the number of units divided by the number of units in the market. So he's forecasting a little under 3% growth in the first year, or 3% market share in the first year. And as we did before, it should be possible to copy all these forward. Let's see if I have captured the right number of... Oh. The exception, of course, being the market unit sales forecast, which I'm going to go back and capture, having just wiped it out. Here it is. And then this is going to have to, these numbers after the second year are going to require their own logic. Now, fortunately, why didn't that take? I'm going to clear the formats, of, or clear the contents of those. Okay. So, we don't know what um, what the unit sales forecast is going to be in the years three for four, but we have a projection of sales. So I'm simply going to take that number as my base at the end uh, during the uh, during year two, multiply it by one plus, and then we have a 
forecast for a sales growth rate. Here now, here's where I do need an absolute cell reference. And that gives me our, my raw numbers. Now, to make this a little bit more reasonable, I'm going to round that using round function in, in, uh, uh, in Excel. And I believe if I don't put in a number, it'll assume 0. Oh, not enough arguments. I'm going to, oops, comma, 0. There we go. That rounded it very nicely. And then I just take that logic and copy it forward. Now I'm all rounded, I'm all nice and neat, I even have a market share projection.